think that one of the final things is just just in in the midst after pandemic and stuff like that what are what yeah. what any plans going you know for the new year's um, music wise or or anything for people to look out for yes i am i'm so i'm so proud of this i just started my own label stiletto entertainment stiletto entertainment and um i was going to do a crowdfunding campaign to raise money for well and i'm also doing my autobiographical book so okay. i'm writing my life story or um not life from childhood but there's a piece of that in there because it has to talk about when my father discovered my talent as a little girl so there's just one little story in there about that so but it, it basically chronicalizes my time within vogue and lucy pearl okay. a little bit of lucy pearl at the very end because i want to give lucy pearl his own book um i think that that time with lucy pearl is deserving of its own story mm. it was such a great group and i want to give it the life and the love that it deserves so mm. that'll be separate from the in vogue album um but uh yeah so i want to do i'm doing that i'm doing all three of those projects i'm not so sure on the crowdfunding thing i may get an investor instead and have that direct. it just depends on how i want to return the money to you do an ROI for the fans. You don't have to do anything on crowdfunding, but it's a little bit difficult because I don't want to ask fans for money. You yeah. know what I mean? It's a little tricky for me. So, yeah, I, I haven't figured that out yet. But um, <laughs> okay. I'm working on a solo album, and I, I'm sorry. That money that I get will garner me to um, be able to fund doing my solo album because you okay. have to have not just the songs but you also have marketing money you have to do a few videos that costs money yeah. you got to do a new photo shoot that costs money uh you got to pay for you don't have to pay to stream but you got to pay for certain outlets on digital um digital outlets out there so there's money that I, that's required to do yeah. my project yeah okay i think the um you know i think what's been what's been interesting and fascinating is <sighs> You know, this just sheds further light into um, the 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 tough industry of of, of the music business because it, it mm. gives you this glamorous because it gives you a feel good factor when we hear the songs, but behind the songs and behind um, behind the scenes, it's 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 never it's not behind always the been music. that behind the music. It's not always been that great, and yeah. and unfortunately for us, you know. More, more, more so than ever. It's been black music seems to be, you know, we still seem to it still seems to be the the cradle of where a lot of these issues still arise. Um, yeah. And and it doesn't. It seem is. To, yeah. It's just it's been. It's a it's really unfortunate. But hearing your own story but again. But you yeah. also have the great stories of artists who have made it and got the right deal, and stood up for themselves. I mean, that's all it requires. Yeah. A lot of times we as people are just afraid to say, you know, uh, we don't want to go against our job, our nine to five. So that's why we have a union to speak for us um, and to stand up and say we need higher you know, wages and lower taxes and we need to have better health care for our children. Mm -hmm. And if nobody is there to do that, in our case, we had a manager, but he was not willing to step. He wasn't able to step in and do the things that were necessary for us to have a better situation. And I was telling them the whole time, as, as soon as I started to wake up and it was like, ding, 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 the light went off in my head. And mm -hmm. I was just thinking, how come, you know, we don't have the same amount of money as our producers and how come they're making so much money? And how come our choreographer has a mansion and our, and our manager has a, ma a mansion, but we don't have one. Yeah. All the lights, all the bells and whistles started going off. And I was like, okay, this is, this is a bad situation. And I think that's why the label got rid of me. Because I was asking the questions that they did not mm. want asked. Yeah. They knew that I understood what was going on. I got it. I was like, oh boy. And so they knew that if I was awake, I, would always, I was also going to wake, wake up Cindy, Terry, and Maxine. And they didn't want that. Yeah. You know, unfortunately. So we, we kind of lost out. You know, yeah. and Vogue fell apart and it wasn't fair. It was, it was so unnecessary what happened to us. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we lost our momentum. So even though I came back to the group several times over the years, they would call me, how bad can Dawn be? Because they put it out that I was so difficult. I was a bitch. I was a troublemaker. But how, how bad can Dawn be when you guys called me back to the group? I think I can't call myself back to the group. It's up to you guys to have me back. And I guess if, if, if promoters are saying, look, we can give you this amount for the three of, three of you, but we can give you this amount if, if you get the original lineup, 
They still didn't have to have me. They don't have me now. They haven't had me for 13 years. Yeah, but if you're talking about doing shows, if you know, promote they still make they make more money without Maxine and I there because they get the same amount of money that they would have with us, they get without us. Okay, so they get to split Maxine's fee and they get to split my fee between Cindy and Terry and then pay Rona whatever you guys want because she's a newbie, they can pay her whatever they want. Yeah, you know what I mean? In, in other words, they are the founding members, so they can get paid more than Rona. Mm. And without Maxine and I there, they don't have to pay us. Yeah. Ooh, my first mistake was I wanted too much time. I had to have him morning, noon, and night. If I would have known then the things that I know now, I might not have lost the time. You know, after you know, I know it's about quarter past midnight here, but it's been great. It's been oh, thank um, you. It's, no, it's, Namdi, 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 yeah. yeah, thank you so much for having me. My battery's dying. Yeah, yeah. no, it's yeah. fine. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's yeah, it was a great interview. Um, I, I enjoy talking. I think you guys have a different, you do, uh, have a different point of view. And I told someone else from the UK the other day, you guys have a sense of humor that you laugh at yourselves more. You don't take, you don't take life so seriously. And I like that. I could tell in the interview, just your questions are smart, you know, and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 No, but it's, it's been great. I mean, I've, as I said, I grew up loving me. You know, I, I went to college at my, my uncle and auntie live in Selma, Alabama. So I moved to the States in 92, lived in Selma, Alabama, went to junior college there, then went to Wisconsin, Milwaukee to go to, to finish off wow. my uni university. And then I, <laughs> then, then I moved to LA and lived in Redondo Beach for about three or four years before relocating to the UK. So 
you know, lived in low, so I was there in the 90s and was there mm. to enjoy the music of the 90s and, and up to the mid 2000s. And, yeah, and yeah. but uh, I've been a, a sort of a music fan, but as I said, I'm a trained therapist outside of that, so a uh, life coach and a therapist. And but you know, but what's been challenging for me over the past couple of months talking to musicians and singers and artists is mm -hmm. the very similar stories that you're sharing um, probably not to the extent that you've had with you know falling out with which would invoke but you know Timmy Gatlin in, in Guy um, right. LJ from, Pro, um, from um, Profile when they came out with Liar um, mm -hmm. um, Nitty Green would rift they, they were the boys in Lean On Me if you ever watched Lean On Me with Morgan Freeman and he got them singing in the bathroom singing mm -hmm. the, so that's them and they went on to okay. form rift and they then and they were with sbk and they performed with vanilla ice and stuff um but you, you know yeah the same sort of industry contracts and stuff like that um and it's it's really it's really sad so our audience mm -hmm. are listening to this and they're like wow we didn't realize we didn't realize we didn't realize and it's that's still been happening um among and again it doesn't it doesn't happen with the white artists that's what i don't understand it's like they want to tear us down and if we're not smart we allow it yeah no definitely so, so like i said if cindy terry maxine would have just had my back and stood up with me against the record company everything would have been fine but they they like i said held me accountable for doing a solo album and not terry yeah and it was just, it was just it, i wasn't the one I was not the one. I was gonna. I'm feisty. I will fight for myself every single time. Yeah, uh, there's a part of me that acts wonders. That did you and Terry? Oh, did you seem to? Did, did was there issues between just the two of you for? No. For, okay. No. It's just Terry when the late. Is, Terry was just, sleeping with our producer, and she thought that that was okay to do, and I was the only one that would say something to her about it, like. I don't care that you're sleeping with him. That's fine. What I care about is if you do the business that's required, you got to stand in solidarity with us. If you don't do that, mm -hmm. you're standing with your man instead of standing with us. I have a problem with that. Yeah. Um, but those, those conversations didn't even come up until later when we would try to resolve things or try to um, reconcile and um, get back as in vogue and come back and re reunite. That's when we would have those conversations. And even in, even in the room with just the four of us, she wouldn't admit anything. Maxine and Terry and Cindy would just sit there and they wouldn't hold her accountable either. And I'm like, I'm not going to be in a group like that. I refuse to do that. Yeah. So there was no beef with Terry and I. There was no problem between us at all. It's yeah. just that the record company was pissed off because I slighted them. Yeah. And it, yeah. So. But I guess the, I think it's a, it's one of the things where, you know, we were, we were, we, we, we lost something great and it, it's just sad but the future is always the future yeah, yeah. As, yeah, yeah. it is life yeah, in the yeah. i mean but all it, of our parents for the most part most of our oh come on you guys most of our parents have um you know broken up or gotten divorced when we were kids and we didn't want them to break up but that's life we got to get over it and yeah. move on and i'm so grateful because had i not left in vogue i wouldn't have done lucy pearl most likely i would not have done that group and it's, I say that about the Beatles the same way, that had the Beatles not broken up, we wouldn't have had Imagine by Paul McC by you know John Lennon or yeah. Paul McCartney and Wings. I mean, you got to go to grow. We can't keep it together just because we got to do safe face for the public and for the fans. We have to do what's right by ourselves. And had they stand by, stood by my side, mm -hmm. I say it over and over and over again. I've been saying it consistently for years since I left in 97. Anytime... Again, in an interview, they would ask me about what happened with Vogue, and I've been saying it since 97. They did not have my back. They kicked me out thinking that they could go on without me, and it fell apart. Hmm. It wasn't yeah. my fault. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, yeah I, I tried my best to stay, but they didn't want me in the group. They yeah. thought, well, we don't need her. We can do this without her. Good luck. Yeah. Had no, I, had I not, <laughs> they probably would have gone on without me if, don't let go ahead and happen. No, because we were a group that the world knew and loved. All four of us mattered. Yeah, so but no, on, I think with don't let go being the yeah, it, that, it's yeah. it's like Tony Braxton's on Break My Heart. You know, it's 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 like don't leave, but no doubts, don't leave. It's 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 even Aerosmith when they had um, um, don't want to leave. It, it's one of those 
because it was a rock. It's it, yeah. It's it was not an R and B yeah. song. It, it was right, a, it was a, a crossover, album. and yep. it got over to the pop side. And unfortunately, you went after that track. You guys went and did, did an R and B track with Babyface, which didn't follow through with where that single was. You should have listened. To, they should have done a single. Said, look, mm-hmm. we need to get David Foster. We need to get the same guys to write a couple more ballads just like this because we're going big time. But they went yeah. back to R and B, and I think people went from that track to the wow. first track, and it it just it just and it was just the three of them. It just didn't look good. It didn't look, make sense. Well, not, like I said to you, it's also karma. Anytime you do wrong to people and you think you're going to have a blessed life after that, it doesn't work. Yeah, we've seen it so many times with people that have done wrong and they, they're mean spirited or they do something so outlandish and so mean. It's like you can't expect to have success after that. The fans were not having it. Yeah, no, they definitely. weren't having it. Yeah. And God wasn't having it. I mean, if you believe in God, God was not. It was like what they did was wrong. Yeah, period, period. Mm-hmm. It was there's no other way to, to say it. Like. I've said it over and over again. I'm like blue in the face now because I've yeah. said it over and over again. I did a, Terry did a solo album. They kept her in the group. Dawn did a solo album. They kicked me out of the group. How is that ever okay? Yeah. It's not going to work. So, and even coming back to the group, um, you can't come back to a situation. It's like getting back after you cheated on your wife or your wife cheats on you and you guys don't talk about it. You have to work it out. Talk about it because it hurt me. What you did to me hurt very bad. Mm -hmm. And because of what you did, the group fell apart. You guys kick me out and the group fell apart. So the fans see us differently. They blame me for the breakup. They still blame me to this day because they don't know the truth. I'm just now getting that truth out mm-hmm. of what happened and how they treated me. So you got to deal with it. And Terry is not, she's not admitting anything. She doesn't want to talk about it. It's like, oh my God, wow. Yeah. So you guys don't want to hold her accountable still after all these years. You still don't want to say, Terry, you're the one who did a solo album first. You had Denny as your man, as your as our producer. You were sleeping with him, and because of that, everything fell apart. It wasn't Dawn's fault. They haven't done that yet. Mm. So I don't, I don't know <laughs> what to say. Well, I mean. we'll, 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 we'll get the story out. But anyway.